Hey, hon. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, babe. Been a little while, but it's good to be back. Mm -hmm. So, the last episode of MMO Storytime went relatively well, and it kind of ended with me teasing bringing you back for another story about how your cat saved one of your City of Heroes raids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this, is a, this is a bit of a story, and it may require a little bit of explanation from time to time. But I'll get to I'll get to that when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And some people have been wanting to hear this, so yeah, go ahead. Ah, City of Heroes was one of the first MMOs I seriously played, and it still holds a special place in my heart even after all these years, and despite its death. Uh, unfortunately, it's no longer around, and uh, NCSoft took it down with thus far extreme prejudice. But, and that's neither here nor there. Because if I get on that subject, I'm probably going to wind up ranting for a while. And that's not what you're here for. What you are here for is the story of how Miss Kidder saved an Eden child. So, again, this has been a long time, so my memory might be a bit foggy on some of the finer details. But, I do remember most of it. So, the Eden Trial is a level 39 to 41 task force hero side against the uh, Devouring Earth faction. Now, if you haven't played City of Heroes, that last sentence probably didn't make a whole lot of sense, so uh, I'll explain a bit. City of Heroes is divided into two major sides, City of Heroes, which takes place in Paragon City, Rhode Island, and City of Villains, which takes place in the Rhode Isles, somewhere in the Atlantic. Which side you play is determined whether you choose a hero or villain character and character creation. Hero characters have the opportunity at various level ranges throughout their career to undertake task forces, raids essentially, which consist of multiple missions against tougher than average enemies, usually culminating in fighting one or more arch villains or giant monsters. These exist villain side as well in the form of strike war. Most of the differences between them are semantic, and you need a minimum of four players to start one, with a maximum of eight. The Eden Trial is one such task force to hero side. It's up against an enemy group known as the Devouring Earth, a faction of sentient plants, rock, fungi, crystals, and on rare occasions, extremely mutated humans, all led by a gigantic, sapient, hyper-intelligent amoeboid known as the Hammond. The Devouring Earth has an agenda of returning all human civilization to nature, starting with Paragon City, and they've already taken significant steps towards doing so. One city zone, known simply as Eden, is almost entirely overtaken by the Devouring Earth, its buildings and homes now overgrown or outright replaced by verdant woodland and plains. Various Devouring Earth monstrosities stalk the shadows between ruined husks of buildings. A few other enemy groups make their home here as well, vying for control with the Devouring Earth, it's largely the DE that rule this place. The Eden Trial is well known as one of the hardest trials in the game, despite being fairly old. Long after its implementation, even with the advent of a higher level cap and incarnate powers, the Eden Trial is still extremely tough. Crazier still, it's only two missions long. Most task forces last anywhere from 5 to even 10 plus in some cases. It's basically short but brutal. Mm-hmm. The first mission is totally uninteresting. You simply have to hunt Devouring Earth enemies in the Eden Zone. 200 of them to be exact. That might sound like a lot, but they appear in packs of 5 to 10, and a well-organized task force can steam all those packs in seconds, especially the lower level ones. Many task forces will actually break into two or even three groups to speed the process along. It's the second mission where our story truly begins. Woodsman, the NPC contact for the mission, tells you that you have four hours to rescue four heroes and defeat the Hamadan's latest creation, a crystal titan he intends to use to siphon the power of the four heroes and hold it. The crystal titan is a fearsome foe, but I'll get into his shtick later. So, we dived into the caves below Eden to rescue our four comrades and shatter the Crystal Titan. The caves beneath Eden consist of three parts. The Rock Wall segment, the Mold Wall segment, and finally, the Crystal Titan's chamber. 
The rock wall proceeded without incident. We fought our way to the rock wall, then lured the boss rock monster quarry away, and tore it apart. We then blasted down the rock wall, ensuring that any summoned rock monsters didn't drop any cans to increase its damage resistances. With the rock wall out of the way, we began to make our way through the mold wall segment. Unfortunately, midway through, our tankers and one of the DPS had a uh, succession of AFK emergencies, which wound up costing us most of our time. We uh, <laughs> joked that we seemed to be taking turns AFKing, and that this was probably the slowest Eden trial on record. With a four hour time limit, though, we didn't really feel pressed for time, and we could take it pretty leisurely. And anyway, AFKs aside, we actually made it to the mold wall in good condition. The Mold Wall, instead of summoning rock creatures, summons animate fungi monster, as well as Greater Devour, mutated humans that have been consumed and converted by the devouring earth into horrific Cthuloid freaks. Greater Devoured in this mission are special. They can drop a unique inspiration, a consumable item essentially, called, Am called Ambrosia. Ambrosia is key to defeating the Crystal Titan, as it severely reduces the damage of the Titan's prismatic AoE. So you want to collect a lot of it. It's vitally important that everyone that's going to be within the blast radius of the Crystal Titan have several of these inspirations, or they're going to die in short order. It was just after the Mold Wall phase that Miss Titters got involved. We entered the Crystal Titan's chamber and began to skirt the Titan's aggro radius to rescue the four heroes. Now, let me paint you a picture here. A broad, open cavern with an outer pathway along its rim a huge lake of acid in its center, with spiraling ramps leading up from the rim pathway to a central island where the Crystal Titan resides. There are literally hundreds of crystalline devouring earth in this room. We didn't have a lot of good stealth players on this run, so we had to brute force it, pounding our way through the various gemstones toward the back of the room where the four heroes were at, and without stirring up the Crystal Titan's aggro on the way. It was along the way that it became my turn for an AFK emergency. I forget just what it was, but I had to bail for quite a bit. We still had over an hour left on the timer, so I wasn't too concerned, but I was the group's Corruptor. Now, for those who don't know, the Corruptor is the village side equivalent of the hero's Defender, support archetype. But where Defenders are support primary and Blast secondary, Corruptors have it reversed, blasting primary and support secondary. Corruptors can be heroes ever since going rogue, with that expansion, hero characters could be created with villain archetypes, and vice versa. Specifically, I was an energy radiation corruptor, capable of firing bolts and explosions of raw kinetic force at enemies to attack them, and able to use radioactive emissions to heal and support allies and cripple enemies. Anyway, while I was AFK, the whole group huddled up in a spot we'd cleaned out, and waited for me to return. Unfortunately, the emergency took a lot longer than I expected. I want to say it was my dad accidentally setting some grease on fire and setting off the smoke alarm in the process, but I'm not exactly certain of that. I could be confusing it with some other situation where I was forced to bail unexpectedly off again. Anyway, now what follows is all stuff that I figured out or learned after the fact. I wasn't present for any of it, but questioning my teammates and putting two and two together, this is what I can best surmise happened. We were starting to run low on time when Miss Kidders, my lovely little tuxedo kitty, picked a bad time to play with my keyboard. She started pawing at it and actually activated one of my healing powers, Radiant Aura. My team thought I was back, so they formed up and started clearing towards the heroes. I'd set my character to auto follow one of our DPSers when I AFK, so that in case the group needed to move, I'd go with them. Miss Kidders must have liked the noise and flashing lights made by my character because apparently she started pawing my power. She'd successfully managed to periodically fire off radiation emission, accelerate metabolism, token cloud, and gain pulse. My team was mystified as to why I wasn't talking in chat, and why I was using powers a lot more haphazardly than usual, but combined with the defender on the team, it was enough to actually rescue the four captive heroes and begin fighting the Crystal Titan. So, about 45 minutes after I'd left, I'd finally returned to my computer, out of breath, to find my team mid-fight with the Crystal Titan and Miss Kidders sitting on my keyboard. I quickly attempted to shoo her off, and after a confused, 
I physically relocated her to the floor. I'd sat down just in time to watch my character keel over dead due to a Crystal Titan AoE, and all but one of my Ambrosia inspirations was gone. I, uh, open up chat just as the Defender reses me, and ask what the actual hell happened while I was out. The entire team expresses shock that I was just now starting to talk. One of the DPSers explains between shots that I'd started using powers so they assumed I was back. Apparently I'd been back, according to them, for at least ten minutes by this point. <laughs> uh, we pulled through the Crystal Titan fight with barely any time to spare. The fight went really rough since one of our tanks was defense-based, and Crystal and DE are kind of good at taking non-resistant characters apart. Not to mention because the Corruptor was using powers basically just at random. <laughs> yeah, uh, which definitely wasn't helping because a lot of my powers actually provide resistance to some degree. Ugh. Anyway, I used my last Ambrosia Inspiration and was lucky that one of my tankers had extras that she passed me, as Miss Kidders had inadvertently burnt all but one of my supply. Still, we made it. Had Miss Kidders not intervened when she did, we might not have. We might have wound up running out of time. After we'd succeeded by the skin of our collective teeth, we chatted for a bit as we inventoried our reward and cooled down after that rough run. It was here that I pieced together most of the events that occurred in my absence. Since she'd effectively saved our task force, I gave Miss Kidders a pet and some treats. She thanked me by squatting on my keyboard as I was typing a few minutes later. Eh, cats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's the story of how Miss Kidders saved our Eden trial. By rolling around on your keyboard. <laughs> More or less. But hey, at least your cat rolling around on your keyboard resulted in a successful Eden trial instead of, you know, accidentally rolling on Alt F4 or something. Oh god, that would have been terrible. Or, you know, her accidentally disabling autofollow and, uh, dragging my character into the acid pool because there would have been no way to res me. Oh boy, yeah. But still, that was probably one of my other favorite stories that you've done that you've shared. Thank you for coming back to share it. Ah, no problem. I, I was happy to. Mm -hmm. If we ever think of any more, uh, or if you have any more that you'd like to share, I'll have you come back. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed MMO Storytime. Thank you for coming again, honey. I love you. I love you too, babe. And thanks for listening to me ramble, folks. I appreciate it. <laughs>